Hi, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Jennifer. And you're watching A Well-Traveled well Life. Life. Where we will do cool projects around the house. And travel the world. Here's to the journey. Belgium is a small country on the western coast of Europe on the Atlantic Ocean. Bordered on the north by the Netherlands and then coming down towards the south you have Germany, Luxembourg, and then on the south side it is bordered by France. It has two different parts to it. It has the French speaking part and the Dutch speaking part. Zeebrugge or Brug is in the Dutch speaking, the Flemish part of the country. So you will hear that H sound a lot in the language and lots and lots of vowel. Brussels, the capital is known as the center for NATO and the European Union. Brug is known more for its medieval and Renaissance architecture, Stade Suisse and the Marktplatz, the Belfry Tower, it's beer, lace, linens, tapestries, and chocolates. Many people think of Zeebrug as a difficult port because it isn't one that you can hop off a boat and be in the midst of the city that you're looking for. But I will suggest that it is worth absolutely getting off the boat. It is worth getting your transportation into the city. If you want to enjoy the city on your own, I think that's completely fine. There are tourist areas. Uh, where you can pick up maps of the city and a self-guided tour, you're not going to be missing very much. If you can read and if you can look, it's Zeebrugge offers you access to both Brugge and Ghent, and they are a feast for the eyes. Even if you learn nothing, just looking, these are cities that will amaze you. Many ships will stop at Zeebrugge, pronounced different ways in different languages. It's either Zeebrugge, Zeebrugge, Zeebrugge. It's a common stop along the Atlantic coast. So if you're coming across from Florida or South America, it's a likely stopping point. If you're coming up the Atlantic coast from Spain north, you may also hit this port. The port itself is actually a huge industrial harbor known for transporting cars but it is the gateway to the city of Brugge. It also is a gateway to the city of Ghent. It is charming and beautiful. Ghent and Brugge sort of have a competition between who's more beautiful. I think you should probably go see both so that you can get your own uh, take on that. Important to note, managing the port, there are a couple of things that will make this easier for you. You can go through the process of doing this on your own. You can walk from the port and then catch a bus to a train station and then take a train into Brugge or Ghent. It's going to take you a while and the schedules are different depending on the day of the week that you're there. So if you're there on a weekend, Sunday in particular, recognize that you may have some difficulty with that process and it may take longer. There are shuttles that will take you from the port into some surrounding cities outside of Brugge. And then of course you can take the ship's excursion that will get you directly into the city of Brugge. And they probably have a number of different offerings for the city of Brugge. I would encourage you if you only have one day in the city, at least get out to Brugge or again to either one or both, um, although you'd need a long day to do both. Once you are there, things that are on offer, Brugge and Ghent are both beautiful walking cities and beautiful boat tour cities. So do whatever you can do to get out on the canals. I think that's absolutely worth it. The canals will give you the best view of the city along with a little bit of a guide talk to you about the architecture and the history and some of the things that set these two cities apart as really special European hubs. You can also do horse-drawn carriages and again as I said walking tours are terrific. You'll get history, a feel for the city. So it's about a half hour drive from Zeebrugge to Brugge by bus 
and that's with like an excursion bus that takes you directly from the port to the city. The harbor is actually part of Brugge, and it is also a common place for Belgians to visit because it has beautiful, beautiful long beaches. I think the problem for most tourists is there aren't a lot of attractions. There aren't a lot of hotels and restaurants and shops and that sort of thing along the coast, but it is a beautiful beach. And if you are interested in just having a quiet day on the beach, I think that would be a really easy excursion to arrange on your own. But if you go into the city, You'll be dropped off at a bus drop-off area. You'll walk across a bridge and head into the heart of Old Town. Brugge is a beautiful city with lots of quintessentially European structure and architecture. You will see what Brugge means. It's bridge, pretty stones and arched bridges, and it does give you that sense of being surrounded by water and quaint, charming places to cross that water. And called the Venice of the North because of the number of canals and bridges. The architecture itself is old and lovely. There are squares and plazas throughout the city. You'll want to get a map because it does seem like between the bridges, the canals, the plazas, the walkways, the alleys, it would be easy to get lost and a good tourist map will give you an overview of the city and how it's laid out so that you can get to the places that you want to see while you're there. It is a small enough city that you'll be able to see much of it either on foot or by boat in a single day. It's a super place to stay just because it is so beautiful and it would be really nice to be there when there aren't cruise ship tourists packing the streets depending on the number of boats that are in port it can be a fairly crowded city but if you were to stay overnight and spend time there when cruise ships aren't there i think you would enjoy the beauty of that city and the quiet nature of it it has super energy you're never going to find it empty but you can find it where the streets aren't packed with cruise ship passengers one of the newest elements of Brugge that I was so impressed with, and we have looked for them in every other city we've been to, is the green chairs. The government purchased and put out green chairs throughout the city along the canals and the rivers as places for people to go outside and stay distanced during the pandemic. The chairs are still there. They're no longer distanced. You'll see them congregated in places, but it's a wonderful way that the city recognized that people still needed to get outside, still needed to have fresh air and to see each other without being right next to each other. I'm glad the chairs have lasted. We do look for them as just nice places to sit and relax and watch the rest of the town pass by. Let's do a little bit of Brugge by the numbers. There are 41 bridges. There are 300 statues throughout the city. There are 21 churches. And I think another one of the numbers that's sort of interesting is that taxes were paid according to the number of windows on a building. So you will see as you are touring through the city that a lot of the buildings have boarded up windows or their windows have been bricked in. And that was actually to save on tax dollars. There are regulations on how you get around Brugge. They have allowed 14 horse-drawn carriages and 25 boats. By one of those methods of transportation, you probably want to reserve that ahead of time. The boat tours are predominantly reserved for the cruise ships. So if you are there on your own on a day when there are a lot of cruise ships in town, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna be able to get a boat tour. So you wanna pre-book that or figure out your day, how many cruise ships are in town. But if you can pre-book, that's the way to do it. They have those regulated so that the canals don't get overcrowded. The boat tours are run by families and these families have their licenses passed down through the generations. So these are folks that have been taking tours on these rivers for a long, long time. They do a very good job. The tour is comprehensive. They have a route that they travel. They have information that they give you and it's very well done. You may be shopping in Belgium for chocolates, for linens, for laces, for tapestries, and for their very specialized alcohol called Ginevra. 
there is a symbol that you will see on buildings of chocolatiers that is the official symbol of the finest quality of Belgian chocolate. So if what you're looking for is quality, you want to look for that symbol on the building. Belgian chocolates are known for the quality of their chocolate, but also for the fillings inside. While in the city, sit and have a beer. There are so many good ones to choose from and enjoy your day in the beautiful city of Brugge.